Hi, I'm John Safran um, from John Safran's Race Relations, now available on DVD. Later on tonight I'll be guest programming at Rage and you probably won't be watching it if you have like an active social life. I remember when I was young, if I was ever home watching Rage, I, as much as I was enjoying it, I was always thinking, oh, I really, if I was cooler I'd be out somewhere, wouldn't I? But anyway, and now for the next hour, because there's some new system where you do a bit in the morning, bit at night. I don't know. It's some Mark Scott, you know, initiative, ABC initiative. So yeah, for uh, yeah, so for next hour, I'm also programming Rage, if that makes sense to you. Hi, I'm John Safran. I used to love watching Rage growing up. I always liked how they had that well thought out double billing of parliamentary question time, followed by. Yeah, a Slayer special or whatever on Rage. So, yeah, so it's uh, it's an honour to finally be programming Rage. Um, next up, we're playing Common People by Pulp. Years ago, when Pulp first came to Australia, I snuck, got backstage via a friend, and I was going, "Oh wow, I wonder what happens backstage at a rock concert." It's probably like uh, definitely, you know, just nasty stuff we can't talk about on morning TV or whatever. But that was the picture in my head, and then. We finally got backstage and there was like Jarvis Cocker and a, like a room full of people and it was like who are these people, who are these mysterious people backstage or whatever and they were just all like store managers from JB Hi-Fi and Target and um, there was a whole, and Sanity Record, there was like a, a whole room full of um, s store managers where the, like the whole thing was like oh you know if you're allowed backstage you'll hopefully you know stock the pulp album favorably you know in the in, in the record rack there at target so yeah that's how that's how exciting backstage is at a rock concert g'day i'm john safran from john safran's race relations now available on dvd and um in not one but two of my shows in the past i have pranked rage and have got videos onto this show under false pretenses but now that I'm old, I've been co-opted by the system man, and now I'm here, officially on Rage, um, to program tonight. Okay, this is Young MC, Buster Move, but before you get excited, like, woo, I love Buster Move, you know, I love the dum dum ho, dum dum ha, dum dum ho, dum dum ha, and you, you know, you're getting all excited, this is, this is, I've ruined your evening, because we're not going to play that version, but he's, uh, a, the atrocious, 2002 remix where they've done that remix thing where they've taken out the catchy musical bit and replaced it with something else for unbeknownst to anyone but because I'm a sadist I'm playing that one I actually we couldn't find it here in the Rage Library I actually wanted to play another Young MC song called um, Keep It In Your Pants and it was this unsuccessful um, follow-up on the next album I'm, I'm quite the fan of the unsuccessful follow-up on the next album after the first album takes things by storm anyway so bust a move it's all about getting busy and sort of you know getting out there and being hedonistic right and then somewhere between that song and that album and the next album he got he became like really conservative and really kind of reactionary and stuff and it was all about hey man you shouldn't you know you should think hard before you get involved in a relationship and he wrote this song called keep it in your pants which as the song implies is just it's like the anti-buster move and it's all about listen you do not have sex with anyone before you get married and I think the line I remember from it was if you're get if you're sleeping with your homeboy's girl you're in trouble it's like Freddy sexing Betty behind the back of Barney Rubble anyway that's, that's the only lyrics I remember from that song anyway we couldn't find it in the Rage Library so I thought how can I inflict some other misery on you so here's Buster Move but not the one with the catchy musical bit but the uh, um, the remix where they've taken out the bit that you like uh, next is MC Hammer's Too Legit To Quit. I like this song because um, MC Hammer just organically had this out of nowhere smash hit, you can't touch this, and these catchphrases took the world by storm, like your parents and your grandparents were sort of going around going hammer time because they all loved MC Hammer, and you know, Kerry Ann Kennelly on Channel 10 would be going, ooh, hammer time, you can't touch this, and it was just like, yeah, it was this these great catchphrases or whatever anyway then MC Hammer tried it a second time like he just you know he thought he could catch lightning in a bottle a second time and he put out this follow-up thing for his next record too legit to quit and 
had all these kind of um, visual mnemonics or whatever, you know, trying to, and it just didn't happen, no one cared. And um, yeah, so this is MC Hammer trying to catch lightning in a bottle a second time and it not working. Too legit to quit. I'm John Safran and when I grew up watching Rage, it was always like blue tinted and I don't know what's happened, but like it's not blue tinted anymore. But yeah, yeah, you're watching Rage no longer blue tinted. Um, this is Morris Minor and the Majors' Stutter Rap, which is a great song, but the reason I'm playing it is because I just want to express my bitterness towards Australia, because Australia hated rap for like 10 years when it was like just fantastic, and and had blown up all over the world, so all these things you hear about that are just, you know, like to say the Beastie Boys or Run DMC, check the Australian charts, they were never in there, they weren't in the top 5, 10, 20, 40s. Um, the, Australia totally rejected hip-hop, and an example of this, this proves the case, the first top 10 rap song in Australia was a song taking the piss out of rap. That's how much Australians hated rap. This was the, um, yeah, the first top 10 rap song ever in Australia, Stutter Rap, by Morris Minor and the Majors. I'm going to play some videos that have connections with people I've like, worked with or with friends or whatever. And this is um, In Excess's Need You Tonight. No, I didn't know Kurt Pingilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligilligil
break up with me or whatever and then but we were having like a bit of a conversation like was this you know I had to ring her back you know she wanted to talk more about it or whatever and then I rang her back and, I, and I, I'm in all this anguish like oh my god are we breaking up or not or whatever and she was just there and there's all this noise she's having the time of her life and she's going oh J John I can't really talk now I'm on a houseboat party with Dallas Crane <laughs> and there's all this laughing in the background and I'm like screw you Bleep girl, I won't name her because I'm I'm quite uh, have discernment or whatever. And screw you, Dallas Crane. I don't I don't know who you are, but I will always associate you with that particular bit of bitterness, which will never, ever, ever leave me. Okay, this next one's Forest's Frolic, which is kind of sort of my song. We wanted to, on one of my shows, we wanted to um, show how pretty much anyone could shoot a music video that would be good enough to get on rage so what we did we uh, strapped the camera to the back of a dog called Forrest and got him to sort of just run around and take all these random shots and you know because we just thought it did pass off as arty because that's what music videos are like these days and yeah anyway and we got it on rage so here it is <laughs> 